Hello and welcome back to the 2018 Waco Charity Open from Waco, Texas. We've got back nine coverage from round one. Joe Mez Pro coming at you with Big Sexy Commentary, Nate Sexton, and Jeremy Cullen. Yeah, we had a uh, two guys at six under the front nine, Paul McBeth and Miles Seaborn. Miles started off with a bogey and then went off to birdie seven of the last eight holes. Landon had a really solid front nine and so did Addison had some struggles, but he's still in the mix. For sure. Hole 10, par 4, 591, probably my favorite hole on the wooded section of this course. Maybe my favorite hole in the course, period. It's a little bit wider, really nice spacing of trees. You gotta go for as much drive as you can, but then there's a slope on the left that can get you in trouble. So these guys are gonna try to bite off roughly 400, I would guess. And it's just one of the things that makes this course so pretty is we got green grass fairways. And we're in Texas. I mean, there's just so many places where all this green is turned to brown. And it's just really nice to have a, a tight tunnel, but you also feel like it's wide. Mm -hmm. And you see Miles right there just throws an absolutely glorious throw right down the middle of the fairway. Mm. And Paul was going for that extra distance Yeah, there. he was. He was talking to me how he... This hole's all, how how can I not reach this hole? Why can't I reach this hole? I'm like, dude, it's 591, and there's like no room. And he's like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a Paul Macbeth conversation. For sure. He like, was like, I was out here, and I just can't figure it out. I can't get to the hole. What's well, going on? Why can't I reach this two-shot hole in one shot? Yeah. Well, it's, a, and, it's a two-shot hole. <laughs> here's Addison with a beautiful turnover. This is going to land just yeah. dead center fairway, big distance. Yeah, that's beautiful. Can't do it any better. Mm-hmm. And that should leave Landon with about maybe 250, I'd like to say. Ooh, oh good. Turned nicely. I was worried at first. Really nice shot there. It's gonna come up just a bit short, probably circle's edge. Here's Paul from a bit of an awkward lie. Still got pretty big distance off the drive though. But this is floating away on him. Yeah, just a little bit too long of a, uh, held onto it for just a bit too long and Hits that big tree there. And look at Miles' drive. I mean, that was just it was so far. And he's yeah, it was. not going to be happy with that approach. We still haven't even got to Addison's yet. This is massive. Wow. And a tomahawk approach. What? What does he know that I don't know? Why did he have to do that? I'm, Interesting. That is a very strange approach there. But he's inside the circle. All long look for the birdie. And watch out. This hillside isn't that treacherous, but if you don't come up short and pump the brakes, you're going to find yourself about 10 to 15 feet longer than you'd like to be. Mm -hmm. And Miles just can't capitalize on what just an incredible drive. Yeah, he had an awkward angle too because he went with that funny little backdoor forehand. I wasn't expecting to mm. see that. I think these guys were just a little bit more jammed up with the trees than it looked like on camera. And some struggles in the putting green. Yeah, and all three guys that were inside the circle have missed their uh, birdie putts and landed just over the rim for his par putt. And you can see with a little bit of wind, mm -hmm. you know, you get over that hillside, all of a sudden the tap in par becomes kind of a, it's not an afterthought anymore. No. You, know, you gotta work for it, so. But Paul makes good work there with his par cleanup and all four players on our feature card are going to walk away this hole with no bogeys and no birdies. Hole 11, par 3, 279 feet straight ahead. This one is also perched up on a hill. They make really good use of these hills to make the putts a little bit tricky, make the landing zones a little bit tricky. You can see backhand turnover or maybe forehand driver here try to hit this hillside perhaps and just control the speed, skid up to the basket. There's a lot of rough long though and a lot of rough left. And you, as a backhand player, you just want to avoid that big tree. Well, he's inside the circle. So uh, Miles will have a good look at it and he's gonna be at the good place where you can give a good confident run. The goal is to do exactly that. Just barely miss one of those two trees and sweet. That is, uh, that is ideal. I'm thinking we're going to see maybe a flip up forehand here from Landon. He seems to be pretty good at that shot. Oh, well, it's getting overstable. Yeah, pretty overstable there. Maybe he was trying to go with a uh, turnover there and break into the hillside and have the hillside do mm -hmm. all the, uh, the break work for the disc. 
Really not bad though, still right at circle's edge. And here's that play into the hillside, slide it up. Oh per yeah. Perfect. Yeah, he's gonna have about 22 feet or so up the hill for his birdie. And this is such a scary putt. Mm -hmm. Not only is he looking at a death putt, but... Ooh, oh, and sits down sits. on the hillside. But if you go down that hill, there's not really that many great places to putt back up to the basket. No. If it gets down into the woods, big trouble. Yeah, it's low ceiling. And here's Paul for his birdie. Yuck. Uh-oh. Kind of cuts through the chains oh, and no. a terrible roll. Oh, my goodness. That is such a bad break. I mean, that was a made putt, and he's laughing about it. Those are, those are laughter of tears, that is. <laughs> oh, and a pretty good effort out of there, too. But, man, I think that's going to be his first bogey of the day. And not, that's two extra strokes. He did not. No. He did not earn those. No. He got them. Great putt. And that's a quality birdie there. I feel like a lefty has a pretty good advantage on this hole. It's a good place for, it, for that, that spin, I think. Mm -hmm. Forehand or left hand is a little bit better than probably the turnover. Nope. Again, that's another huge looking basket next to Paul. Hole 12, par 5, 609 feet. This one is tough. You're going downhill and to the right. You really have to make sure that you just hit the center of the fairway with the first shot. You're not going for a whole lot. And then the next shot, up the hill, to the right, but then it kind of straightens out at the end, and that's kind of what gives it that, that par 5, just having it have that third break. Mm -hmm. This is really all you're looking for off the tee. Yeah, a little bit of a flip, and they, they removed one tree in the fairway that really made that shot difficult. Um, and uh, so that, he's in a great position for his second shot. I would say maybe in position for eagle. Actually, really, any shot that's in the fairway is in position for eagle. It could happen. I mean, you just need a great, great shot. Mm -hmm. It's not really so much the distance as it is the technicality of the next shot. It's getting overstable quick, but not quick enough. Oh, and really not a good skip at all. I thought that was actually on a really good line, but couldn't quite make it back into the fairway. Macbeth looking like he's throwing a destroyer here. Mm -hmm. Right there in the middle, we're exactly where you'd like it. Miles off of one of the only trees that was directly in his way. Might have been a pretty good shot otherwise. And that might be a little tough for Landon. We'll see what he's got from there. And you can just see the, the growth down there is so thick that even though he got the distance right, it's um, not necessarily, the hole's not over with. He's got plenty of work to do from there. This looks pretty good. Yeah, that is probably 60 feet to the pin. And here is Paul definitely thinking about trying for an eagle. Oh, that's on a great line there. Oh, yeah. And just, wow. Awesome. 25 feet or so for big time bonus three. Definitely. An eagle that is easily gettable, mm -hmm. but um, still feels a little bit more special than a birdie, I'd say. Yeah, I think so too. Oh man, and Miles really having some trouble with the lumber. That's a quality shot there for Miles. That needs to sit down. This green is heavily protected with uh, really stuff all over the green. It doesn't really matter where you are. If you're inside the circle, there's probably going to be something near you. That's a nice escape. And here's Addison for a three. Oh. Good effort. Let's see if Paul can connect on his eagle look here. Maybe even closer than we called it, 25. Oh yeah, no problem. Nice. That'll get your round back on track. One of four players to three this hole.
and a good par putt there from Miles. Stop the bleeding. The group still went four down. Now we are done with the woods, folks. We're back in the open for the final six holes. Hole 13, par four, 555 feet with one mandatory to keep you from going over the parking lot. You might see a roller here if the conditions are calm enough, but it's uh, pretty hard to reach otherwise. Maybe Paul could do it with the perfect destroyer shot. And we have a good tailwind here, but it looks like he's lining up one of his famous AVR destroyers. And that's a, a safe, aggressive play there. Mm -hmm. And man, that was a bummer there to hit the edge of that tree. I think he was waiting to see it uh, reappear. Yeah, sure. Oh no. And a grip lock here from Addison. He's gonna have a whole lot of distance left. Now we, we do have some tailwind here, so with nothing in the way being on the left side, he should be able to throw a pretty clean approach. He's gonna have quite a bit of distance to do so. Left maybe 420 feet or so. Yeah. But, um, but not impossible. Not impossible. Here is Miles, taking that same gap as Paul, but it was a little bit low, I think. This looks like a pretty good effort. Need some skips. And well, at least it doesn't go out of bounds. Yeah. Wow, he did crush that. Yeah, he had the distance, just not quite the accuracy he was looking for. Calling for it to go. Little short. Oh boy. Wow. Uncharacteristic to see Paul make a mistake with the Novi. He's one of the best in the world with that putter approach. And Landon. And yeah. Oh boy. That tailwind, you can see it's ripping here. It's very easy to skip up and go long. That's going to be a really tricky headwind putt from about 40 feet. Yeah, it is. Maybe a little bit longer. We have no one in the circle after two shots. Surprising. Mm, Paul stays a little too high with the tailwind. Trying to compensate. Wow, look at that drop. Wow. And this is a tough putt here. Pretty yeah. good line. Mm hmm. I feel like if you're 40 feet away and you're in a headwind and you're in Texas, if your putt even looks like believable, you did a great job. <laughs> like if it isn't like <laughs> eliciting laughter. Yeah, absolutely. Believable is a great word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great word for it. Nate, what do you think? It's time to give him some, uh, some tips. To throw with big power, you got to throw smooth. I see too many beginners that throw all tensed up. For more tips like this, check out our 2018 disc golf guide. Loosen up, people. Definitely. Loosen up and throw some big shots. Hole 14, par three. We're going through the triple mando. Got a couple trees, you got OB left and right, but not too in play. And the basket is kind of here on the hillside, just slightly with these big rocks. Probably gonna see some forehands to, from the players that are comfortable with that. Also backhand turnover, definitely an option. And with this tailwind here, this hole is gonna play much closer to like 260, 270. Mm, this is gonna be skippy. Oh, it's gonna be really skippy. And that is skippy obiski. Wow. Wow, surprising there from Paul. With that much tailwind, you really got to keep that thing trying to go left initially out of your hand, but that was Heiser all the way, the whole way. Yeah, probably overstable Firebird, and the tailwind just got a hold of it and made it crazy overstable. And Addison cannot keep his disc on the left side of that tree, which is the ideal um, space here for the, for the flight of the disc. And Landon going with Landon. extreme flex. Perhaps a little scared by Paul's shot. Yeah, maybe some overcompensation there for, for the mistakes he's seen from the other two guys. And Miles, not necessarily a guy who throws wow. a ton of forehands. 
In the last two holes, we're seeing some uncharacteristic shots here from a card that's otherwise played really well. Yeah. I mean, th this is this is the worst four drives from any group, I yeah. would say, on this hole. Yeah. It's really, it's not that hard. I no. mean, the, they, they all just kind of let it get away from them a little bit. With nobody even within 80. And even I mean, Paul is, but he's OB. With crazy amounts of wind, the hole still was only averaging 2.81. I mean, that's... yeah. And that's, you know, on a calm day, that's going to be closer to probably 2.5. Paul for the par. Wow. Can it just stick? Yeah, he's, he's baffled. I'm baffled, too. That was, a, that was a beautiful putt. That should have gone in. Yeah. Maybe a touch on the left side. Definitely a little left, but you but, still expect that to probably drop most of the time. I mean, it went through the chains, though, so that's yeah. the thing. If it had pushed out the chains, then, yeah, it never had a chance, but that went through the inner yep. chains, so that's just an unfortunate break there for Paul. Mm -hmm. And we had a little apology there from Landon. Sorry that happened to you. <sighs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, we all feel for that when that happens. doesn't matter what the situation is, who it is. It's tough to see. Hole 15, par 4, 558, a very short par 4 for how open it is, especially considering we got a tailwind to play it in. So these guys are going to be looking to just get maybe into this square made by this uh, railing of sorts and then up to the basket. It's uh, You just need to stay in bounds here, really. This looks pretty long, should get past the railing. Yeah, and that's really just the play. Is it just pitch something near that railing? It's just not that hard to get your three here. Um, the thing to avoid here is to get too aggressive and maybe trying to go for your two. Maybe you go out of bounds, skip into the road, or go over the fence here. Mm -hmm. um, but you really just want to keep yourself somewhere in that area there, as we see Addison and Landon do perfectly, and then just pitch something up near the green. I'm curious to see what Paul does. After, after a bogey and a big tailwind, a hole he could definitely reach, but I don't know if... If that's the play necessarily, see what he see what he goes for. I mean, if he's talking about reaching at 591 in the woods, we got 558 I wide know. open with a tailwind. Yeah, I'm surprised he isn't going mid-range. We're definitely going to see him going for this, but there is that tree there. He this needs to sit down. Oh, I, I wonder. Do you think inbounds or out of bounds? I'm thinking maybe out of bounds. We have a fast ground there, but either way, he is in bounds. Our speculation is... Maybe no importance. If, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's hard to say what that if that was going to stay straight enough. I have to ask Paul. I'm sure he'll <laughs> say it was ace. His speculation is of no importance either. Yeah. There he is. His second shot is up on the green. That's true, I suppose. <laughs> He's got a tailwind putt from about 20 feet. Addison along. Yeah, and that happens quick with these. If you're going with a driver or any sort of fast disc. You have to just kind of play the stall shot, let the wind do its job. As you see here from Miles, kind mm -hmm. of going to town. The last thing you want is a longer putt than 20 feet into this headwind. Yeah, I, f I really feel like you want to be short here. Like, give mm -hmm. me the, I would rather have twice the distance right. in the, into the tailwind than go into a 30 mile an hour headwind. Ball collects his. Good birdie there. And if I told you that two people in the field got twos in this hole, who would you guess they would be? Wow. Um, give me Simon Lazat for 500. And... Jeez. Jeez, exactly it's right. Garrett guess. Gerthy, you got it ah, right. <laughs> yeah, G's, two G's. Yeah, yeah double G. Did I, get it, did I get both of them right? Yeah, Simon Lazat, Garrett yeah, Gerthy. That's what I meant. I call them G's. Because <laughs> double G, you know. Right, of course. Yeah, Simon and G's. Easy. I didn't know that. <laughs> Hole 16, par 4, 585 feet. You got an OB path on the right, OB fence on the right. There's OB left, but it's a long way left. So this one is, actually this one also is elevated as you don't, you don't see it here in the drone footage, but it's been elevated, so a little bit trickier. Quasi-deucible, but oh, yeah. really something special if you can do it. Yeah, it's a hole where the OB is kind of in play on the right side if you try to throw the big turnover shot. But other than that, really the only difficulty is just avoiding um, this low ceiling here off the tee if you're trying to go for a big shot. Other than that, if you're just trying to play it for two shots, the hyzer shot like we see here mm -hmm. from Miles, 
you should be fine. But man, it, I really feel like it's begging for a roller with this. I mean, look at this rip and tailwind. I honestly felt like it was just gonna go too far. Well, I actually had experienced that last year. I threw in the horseshoe, horseshoe pits long. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of, that does come in play. That's a huge air shot. <laughs> you could just throw an air shot five feet off the ground to about 540 feet. Yeah, no problem. Horseshoe pits is hard to say, I feel like. Like yeah. there's a lot of like word blunders that can happen. Definitely, and you people at home, the mic's not on. Don't even try. Oh no. Oh man. And that did not look like it had the forward momentum to carry OB, but it has. Here is Landon going out over the out of bounds and executing it really well. And there's that mortar again, well thrown. Nice shot. Miles with a good approach there. Tapping three on this hole is going to feel nice. Addison from the out of bounds recovers pretty well. And this is Paul for an eagle two. Huge tailwind, high basket. Oh, so hard to keep it as high as you'd like. Nearly impossible. I mean, even if sometimes you put it high with the tailwind, some it lifts. And yeah. It's the last thing in the world you can do is allow that to happen. Yeah, it's that's a crazy tough putt. You'd probably have to putt it 20 feet above the chains, what it would appear from your vantage point for it to go in. And Landon with a really quality birdie putt there. You can see the excitement on his uh, face there as he taps that one in from about 18, 20 feet. But this headwind here is ripping. Yeah, you can see Paul having to take a second. Wind is so strong. And a really nice putt there. Even with this tailwind, this hole was still the easiest uh, scoring average on the course at 3.55. So average about half stroke below par. Mm -hmm. And even Miles took his time there on his two footer. Yeah. All right, hole 17, we have made the corner and we are back into that raging headwind. So these t last two holes really playing tough. Hole 17, par four, 610. This is really not a tweener. This one is a real two shot par oh, four. Absolutely. You gotta play your way up to the corner and then play down to this tough green, wind and water abound. And without question, the hardest hole in the course into this headwind, so many difficult aspects of this hole. What a great shot from Landon here. Low is the key off the tee. Mm -hmm. If you throw the forehand, keeping it low to avoid those limbs is paramount. Um, this shot right here is going to be really tricky that, well, he's going with the low Anheuser, which is the way to go. Oh, this yeah, that is nice. that is ideal shot wow, there from miles. great distance. To be able uh, to see the pin after one is, is such a huge advantage. And Paul trusting that destroyer over out of bounds, coming back in. Wow, big skip off the concrete there. What a funny way for it to land. Oh, man, like that's that. going to be an awkward lie. I do not believe that is out of bounds. I don't think so either, but sure yeah. it's not. Yeah. Really a tricky place to be, though. Yeah. And a really nice shot there from Addison. Wow, these are four fantastic drives in this mm -hmm. hole. This is a very tricky hole. I mean, you, we're going from the easiest hole in the course to hands down the hardest hole, averaging 5.12, a full wow. stroke over par. That is crazy. You rarely ever see that. Wow, what a shot from Unbelievable. Paul. That was phenomenal. Wow, what a great shot from Paul. And this needs to just let the wind smash it down, and it has... Sit. Oh, oh, just man. too many rotations. And Addison's got a decision of his own. Do you get aggressive from here? It looks, looks like the answer is yes. Wow. Sweet. So apparently... The, uh, the counter spin is the way to go into this hole. <laughs> Landon heard you. And that's that a is, little too high. Yeah, that's going to get pushed from that wind. Hopefully it's overstable enough to get down, and it is. Yeah. And he's actually he's inside the circle. circle. But he's got a terrible headwind putt, probably. Oh, it looks like the flag is actually giving him a bit oh. of a break, but not quite. And I tell you what, man, four in this hole does not feel bad, but that was an opportunity there to grab mm -hmm. one on the field. Mm-hmm. Miles is going to be settling for a bogey. What a great birdie there from Addison. Yeah. Wow. 
Miles makes bogey after the out of bounds. And there it is, two birdies on a hole that was birdied nine times in the day out of 108 players. So a wow. quarter of the birdies for the whole day were right there on that card. We picked the right guys to film. Hole 18, par four, 492 feet over the water. What a great finishing hole. Super wind today. What do these guys do? They can either play left side of the water, they could go straight over the water to the right, play for a, a layup, they could go all the way for the pin if they're really feeling crazy. Super tough. Um, looks like Paul's lining up the right side fairway as his shot here. He's going for something. Wow, is this gonna stay in bounds? Oh my goodness, and this thing is turning over crazy. It but, does though. Wow, pushes down just enough to leave him in the fairway. It looks like that could have been drifting over the wall out of bounds. Mm -hmm. And what a tough hole for a lefty. I mean, he has to hang this thing out so wide over OB the whole way. Yeah, yikes. And this going looks downhill pretty. towards the water. That's a great really shot. Nice shot. That is such a scary shot for a lefty. I mean, if you don't have a forehand into this headwind to play safe, I don't know what you do. Yeah, I guess that. Super overstable disc from Landon. Nicely played. And Miles also following that same line. Nicely done. Addison, it's got a lot of heat oh. on it. Look at the wind. What a weird reaction. Wow. Wow, just bouncing around like crazy. And in the circle, yeah, he's got a look. It's gonna be about 23 feet into a stiff headwind. That looks a little short. Mm. It's so scary to go for that shot. You have such a small landing zone behind the pin. Yeah. Landing electing to just play safe there and Paul with the AVR X3, showing why that disc nice. is so good. He you can throw it so hard and it just doesn't carry. It just wants to really just fall out of the air. Landon, half harder attempt there. Just content to get out of here with his four, I think. Oh, oh. man. And here is Miles. Yes, quality birdie putt there. Great round. Good finish for Miles, eight under. Landon wishes that he had thrown a better approach shot, go to nine under. But he'll be content with an eight down, a solid round. Addison finishing at three, and Paul's gonna have this left to shoot a 10 under par and really heavy wind. Nicely done. 10 and two eights, really some quality golf. Even <laughs> Paul loves it, he's got the thumb up. Beautiful. Well, thank you guys for joining us for round one. Let's take a look at the leaderboard, see who we're gonna be looking at tomorrow. Devin Owens, Paul McBeth, Big Germ, and Greg Barsby. Yeah, Greg Barsby and myself were on the lead card last year at this event, so a little bit of rehash from 2017. Should be really fun, we got a lefty in the card. The guy maybe you, many of you guys have heard of, Paul McBeth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the forehand-backhand combo of Greg and myself. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. We will catch you guys then.